Hi there. How's it going? Welcome to Behind the Scenes. I'm Angela Wolf. If you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. This place is uh, busy today, very busy. And so I apologize for being a few minutes late. I actually was using my video cameras for something else and I had to rewire everything to go live. So I apologize for that. So um, do you see what's behind me back there? Lots and lots of silk. So Fashion Sewing Club is going to be having some fun in the next couple of weeks with some fabric stash sales, but uh, fabulous deals. And um, first, I got to go pick out what I want to make sure I stash that away. So how are you guys? How was your day? Hey, Lisa, great to see you. I see the wolf pack rolling in. It is a beautiful, sunny day here in southwest Michigan. That's all I got to say. Just gorgeous. Sun's out. I'm a happy camper. <laughs> so um, today I have a fun project for you because it's not really organizing. I know we're doing organizing, but you can watch last week's show. It's on my blog and I have a giveaway for you. And out of necessity, because it's going to be really cold this weekend, I need to make a fleece gator mask. Now, this is not the mask for medical mask. This is a mask to wear outside because it's freezing out and it's going to snow. So it's more of like if you are going skiing or fishing, hiking, something like that. So I have some fleece laid out and I'm just going to give you some tips for sewing these because we used to carry these every time we would snowmobile because I couldn't stand the cold air on my face, especially anybody who has asthma knows that if... The cold air, if it's freezing cold out and you're out walking in that, it's miserable. So I would always get these masks that would just go up to here, similar to the ones you've seen me using fishing, the windbreak ones. But this would actually just protect from the cold weather and keep you warm. So it's almost like a scarf gator mask. So that's what I'm making today. And then I have a special giveaway for you. So uh, first off, last week's giveaway, and I have my page up here. Um, I have not heard back from many of you, so there might have been a miscommunication. So you need to message me. <laughs> you need to message me or email me. So go to AngelaWolf.com and send me an email or else I can't give you your pattern. Because the way we did the giveaway, there wasn't an official entry form, so I don't have your email address. Okay? And many of you were on the blog, and I don't have, I don't know what your username is on Facebook. So you have to message me, and I made it really easy for you. So let me just share this real, with you really quick, and I'll also tell you about the giveaway that I'm going to be doing one lucky drawing on Friday. So let me just bring this up for you. Bear with me for one sec. All right, let me share this. You ready? So this is AngelaWolfPatterns.com, or this is actually, if you go to AngelaWolf.com, or fashion sewing with AngelaWolf.com. You know, all of these lead to like different places, but you can just pick one of them. And then on here, click blog up here at the top, or you can scroll down and click blog, whatever you want. But if you click down here, you can even scroll down and here's some more blogs. So I made this really easy for you. There's two new blogs for you to read. This one right here, see? This was uh, actually a photo when I did that uh, DVD for Threads Magazine. So if you click on that one, if you scroll down, there's the video from last week. If you want a recap of what everybody was sewing, I'm trying to put those on the blog to make it easier for you to find. Here's the list of all the giveaways and the winners. Really easy. And all you have to do is scroll down here and leave a comment and let me know you were one of the winners. Or you can even just pop in and congratulate one of the winners. Either way, on this blog post right here, uh, I also included last week's version with everyone for organizing. So you might like to watch that. That's the one from that we do live on Brother. So that's one blog post you might want to check out, especially if you won, because I got to find you. And on here, you can um, leave a comment or email me, whatever. Okay, so one more thing is if I go back to blog, there's one new blog, and this is your chance to enter to win. So what am I giving away this week? I... I debated a little bit over the weekend, which is why you didn't see anything, because I thought, wait a minute, we've got a great knits class starting on Saturday, and many of you have already signed up, but you can still enter, because guess what? You just get a refund. How easy is that, right? Okay, so this, thanks, Susan. It's AngelaWolf.com, guys, in case you didn't see that. 
So here's the NITS class, and this is also on the blog. So either go to AngelaWolf.com and click on blog, or um, I just gave you everything. That's all you got to go to. On this one, here's the list of what's going to be in this class on Saturday. This is a great going to be a great class. So Mary from ASG out in Seattle, thank you for putting this together. So you don't have to be an ASG member to join, though. We made it where anyone could join, but it's special for the ASG. So um, this is, I guess you can thank ASG for this class. <laughs> it's a, a small fee to join. And here, you can click right here to join. I'm already signed up. So that's why it looks like this. But if you go to the blog, you can join us. It's Saturday. The class is going to be live. It's three hours. Of course, we'll take a break halfway through. You'll have a chance to ask questions. I'm going to be teaching all about knits and some fitting things, some sewing things, and you'll get to hang out with your friends. So all you have to do here, if you want to win this, is scroll down to the bottom. And where's the comments? Hold on. Here we go. I have to make sure I left room for the comments. Maybe I got to pop back in there. Let me just see here. Make sure I left room for the comments. There you go. Leave a comment. This just went live two minutes ago. So there's absolutely no comments in there. That's why I missed it. All you have to do is leave a comment why you'd like to take this class. And Friday, I will draw one lucky winner. Uh, for those of you that are already in the class, if you're already in there, I will um, give you a refund. But I'd love to join you. You can see there's already a lot of people in there saying hi. So it starts in two days, 22 hours, 15 minutes, and six seconds. So that is your rundown for the news of the week. All right. <laughs> Hi, Diana. Great to see you. Uh, yes, Janice, it'll be um, it'll be recorded. And I have a uh, tracking for you, too, by the way, because uh, I think it just went out this morning. Um, the class is three hours. You'll have 30 days to watch the replay. If that makes any because I know a lot of people are busy on Saturdays, although not all of us. <laughs> it's from noon. Let me make sure I got this right. Noon to three Eastern Standard Time. All right, so, oh yes, Shirley, I saw you were signed up, which is fantastic. And yes, if you're not gonna be there live, you can go back and watch. And you can also leave questions in advance too, if you want. Okay, Mary, on It's So Easy last week, used a tool to turn the strap inside out. What was the name of the tool? Was it that um, big contraption? Mary, I have to go back and watch the episode. I have it around here somewhere. I'll see if I can find it and I'll post a photo because I use a lot of different things. Sometimes I just use a little hook. Sometimes I use, um, well, I'll, I'll find them all and see if that's what you're talking about. All right, so let's see. I I see your guys' message. I'll take care of it. Let's see if I can find it though. You want some of that snow in Arkansas, Lisa? Oh, I see who you're talking about. No worries, guys. Out of there. <laughs> Gotta love the wolf pack. Okay, do you go to your website to sign up for the NITS class? If you go to my website right there, you can click to sign up for the NITS class. It's right there. So go to AngelaWolf.com, click on blog, and go right to this uh, NITS class here. I'll just show you. <laughs> you're welcome, and thank you for letting me know. What would I do without you, right? Here you go. When you're on the blog, you can click the photo. I believe you can just, there should be something right here that you can click to sign up. If not, I'll go double check it right when we're not live, just to make sure. But that's where all you, I try to make it easy for you to find. You should be able to click this photo or click right here to join. And if it's not working, I'll take care of it as soon as we're not live. Okay, I'm just, uh, yeah, the class will be recorded. And for those of you that are in the Fashion Sewing Club, it's on the same platform that we do Fashion Sewing Clubs. So you can leave questions in advance. Um, you'll be able to go back and watch it for 30 days. So it's a different type of virtual class, a little bit longer, three hours, and it's broken up into little sections. So I think that you'll enjoy it. And also when you go back to watch the replay, it's very simple to skip ahead to the sections that you want. All right, I'm just making sure I'm not missing any of other questions from you. Oh, Lynn, you should join. <laughs> Would love to have you. 
He's in a bowling tournament. That'd be fun. So by the way, that must be some new trend. Um, Debbie, will this class be much different than the class on Angela Wolf Academy? So this one is is live. So the the knits class, the essential guide to sewing knits class on my website, uh, Angela Wolf Academy. That's a really in depth class that covers sewing. That's like covers everything. There's not a lot of fitting in that one though, and this one's going to cover some fitting. So the Angela Wolf knits class that's on the academy site. Oh my gosh, I don't even know how many hours. I think there's 24 videos in that that cover sewing machine, serger, cover stitch, and a lot about sewing knits. This one will be a little bit different, but if you're just trying to get to learn everything about knits, that class is perfect. This one is more engaging because it's virtual. Two people talking, right? All right, any more questions on that? And I'm gonna go sew my gator mask. Is the class for beginners? It's a combination. It's beginner. I try to keep all my classes where even if you knew nothing about sewing knits, it'll be helpful. But also, even if you're advanced, you're not bored out of your mind. <laughs> so I would say, yes, it's good for beginners. Also, because you get to ask questions there and I answer them. So there'll be time for Q&A halfway through and at the end. And you can find everything on the website information and you can also email me too. Let's see. Oh, hey, Helen, are you having a problem getting in? Thanks, Janet. I love some of your new tops, by the way. You got it, Mary. Thank you for, you guys are great. I don't even have to type it in. All you have to do is leave a comment at that blog post. Now, tomorrow I'm going to give you another surprise that you. I will also put links to the Knits class on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, Wynn. Well, I'm happy to know it's you. What do you got? What do you got in your box? What's in the box? A very small load of clappers. <laughs> you got clappers? I got a few, not many. All right, we got mini clappers back in stock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so when I'd make you this scarf that I'm making, the skater thing for snowmobiling, except it's a uh, peach color. It would look good on you, but it's not uh, your. Not quite my color, but. You're going to pass? <laughs> See you later. Everybody's saying hi. <laughs> Take care. He's, there goes my CEO. <laughs> you know, for those of you that are new to the Wolf Pack, we call Win the CEO because he carries everything out. So it's kind of like our, and he'll never, ever get fired. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, that's funny, Melody. <laughs> he just left. Yes. Okay, so back to, I'll answer that last question. Oh, Karina, not anymore. <laughs> You're so right. So anyways, back to this squirrel. <laughs> and yes, the squirrels are eating almost out of my hand still. Uh, if you go to that blog and leave a comment today, tomorrow I'm going to add something on Instagram and Facebook to give you a second opportunity to win. So as you know, I like to share things all over the place. And I will draw a winner around 4 o'clock, about 4 o'clock on Friday and I'll let you know who the lucky winner is. And then the rest of you, I will see Saturday from noon to, two, I think it's 12 to three Eastern Standard Time. Okay, I think that's right. I gotta double check. It's probably right there on here. Yeah, Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time. So are you ready to go make a gator mask? I'm just making sure I'm make, not missing any of your questions. Hey, Linda. So if you're trying to sign up for the knits class, there's two different coupon codes. If you're an ASG member for the one on Saturday, you need to message Mary. If you're a fashion sewing club member, it's in the fashion sewing club, okay? If you're trying to sign up for the essential guide to sewing knits on the Angela Wolf Academy site, that's the in-depth major class. There's only one coupon code and that's for the fashion sewing club and that's in the fashion sewing club site. So you can always email me too and I can find it for you. Oh, yay, Helen, you made it. And Helen, those little hats you were making uh, are so stinking cute. You're going to have to come on. And I, I don't know if I think you were making them unless you were in a fabulous store. <laughs> those were adorable. I absolutely love it. All right. I'm making sure I'm not missing any questions before we go. Oh, Delia. 
I really highly doubt it's $49 unless you live in like, um, I don't know. If you message me though, I can check it out for you. There's been some weird thing going on and I'm checking into some new shipping companies or different shipping software, I should say, because they're giving prices that are crazy. I think this last month in December, many of you know this, that when you buy stuff on the website, I would end up refunding uh, a ton of money because somebody paid like 80 bucks for shipping. And I think the real cost was like 20 <laughs> or 18 or something like that. So it goes according to weight, but something goes out of haywire. So just message me because I'm pretty sure $49 is not correct unless you're in another country, which then it gets a little pricey. And yep, Patricia, you're right. Okay. So what did you say, Helen? I'd see... You still have a few there. Those are so cute. You, you're going to have to come on and show us those because those are really cute. All right. So let's go work on our making sure I'm not missing anybody. Let's go work on this gator mask because this is really fun. All right. You ready? Here you go. I'll meet you over there. Okay, so here's my fleece. This one's for me. Now you know why I was joking with Wynn that this one's not for him. So the first thing you want to do is, when I this was a piece I just found in my stash. So I don't know which end is the salvage. So what you first want to check out is which way does the fleece stretch. If your fleece doesn't stretch at all, cut it on the bias because that will stretch. And that's very comfortable too, but this does have a light stretch. So I have measured, I'm gonna use a measuring tape and measure around my neck. And I'm gonna go back over here and just show you something. This is when I get my exercise in. Okay, so you wanna measure around your head. <laughs> and you're going to need to measure where, like, I don't know, your head, like, it's up here. I wouldn't measure down here because then you can't get it over your head. Now, depending on how much your fleece stretches, maybe you can get it over your head anyways. But I like my fleece for these. These are not, remember, these are not medical gator masks. These are just something to protect you from the cold weather when you're out walking or fishing or something like that. So I like it to hang on my nose, but be out a little bit. I cannot stand to have that fabric in my mouth, which is why I hate wearing masks, which is why I don't go anywhere <laughs> because it makes me sneeze or cough. And then everyone thinks you have COVID. So measure around your head. Okay. And now also measure around where you want it on your face. So this is pretty far out. I don't think I'm going to want it this far from my face. So I'm going to make it a little bit tighter, maybe about here. And then that will be enough that I can stretch it to get over my head, which I won't be doing live. So I have about 20 inches here. And also, how long do you want it? I like mine to come up over my nose. So when it's really cold and we're out hiking or something like that or going for a walk, I just want that to protect my face from here, from the wind, from the cold. So I like mine to be about this high. And I also like it to go down about this far on my neck. Now, this one's different than the one we made last summer where I had it tight here and go out. That was more for masking it. This is more for weather. So I'm going to have it go about this long. 13 inches. So I got 13 inches, 20 inches around. Let's go back over there. We need to have like a music playing or something when I go from place to place. Like Jeopardy. <laughs> All right. 20 inches. Oh, that was a pretty good guess. This is uh, 22 inches. Now, by the way, you're going to need a seam allowance. So I'm probably just going to use this. I might just go ahead and use, how wide is this? 22? I'll make it a little shorter. I'm going to use a one inch, half inch seam allowance. And then by 13, I could double it over. So it's, um, if I double it like this, that will make it nice and full. So let's do, let's double it. Let's see, make sure I got the right 
yep, this is the stretchy way. And let's go ahead and just trim this so it's even. Okay, and let's see, is that about 13? Oh, close enough. It's like 14 and a, well, I'll even it out. Why don't we just do that? If I want it 13 inches long, and then I need a little seam allowance if I decide to attach the end, I haven't decided yet. I kind of like go with the flow on this. Let's just make this even though. Yes, I'm using a rotary cutter and it makes it so easy to cut fleece. Okay, so this side's pretty even. This is the bottom that's going to go all the way around. This is the edge that we're going to be sewing. And now this needs to be 20 inches. Well, it looks by the time I finished evening this out, it's 20 inches exactly. So I'm definitely going to use a shorter seam allowance. I might even use like just a quarter of an inch because I don't want to lose too much. I want to make sure I can get this over my head. And let's just even this out just a little bit. So basically, we have a full rectangle. Now, this is the wrong side. In case you can't tell, I'm going to put a big old yellow X here so I don't accidentally sew it the wrong way. How do you tell? This just has a different feel. This looks really pretty on the outside, just a different texture. So again, let me just make sure that I've got the right side here. So this is the one that goes up and down. So you have to imagine this is your nose and this is the bottom of your neck. So let's take this with wrong sides. All right, and we're going to sew, looks like I got a little snip right there. I'll have to make sure I sew past that. Uh, we're just gonna sew from one end to the other now, you have a choice. If you sew this from one end to the other, and you're gonna flip it right side out, we're gonna have this opening at the bottom. You have a few options here. You can leave that open, which makes it a little bit easier to sew these two ends together, but it's really up to you. So I'm just gonna sew from end to end right now and show you a really, really easy way to do this. Um, I really don't care about finishing the ends because there's no fraying here. And this is called Easy Fast Project. I'm probably gonna sew about five of these, so let's go to the sewing machine. All right, now. I'm using, of course, the Brother Luminaire which I love, love, love. Oh my gosh, I can hardly believe how many of you uh, have bought one this year because you're all in the Luminaire class. And uh, I hope you're enjoying the class because that's a lot of fun. But um, this machine is fantastic. So I'm gonna use a straight stitch because this doesn't stretch this way. I don't have to worry about um, using a zigzag stitch or anything like that. So let me just make sure you can see okay. All right. My watch isn't working, so if somebody tries texting me, you probably won't get me. <laughs> I need like a little microphone. All right, so I'm just doing a really small seam allowance because remember I ran out of fabric. Oops, I unplugged my foot pedal. Tell you, when I'm working on other projects and then I go live, who knows what's gonna happen. All right, so I'm using pink thread. Now, if you have any problem with your fabric sliding at all, here's a little trick. You can hold your finger right in here. Hold the fabric together, all right? And then just do little pieces at a time because I'm controlling the fabric from sliding. You could also use my favorite, you know, my favorite foot, the move it foot, 
which sews through fleece so nicely. All right, this is that little snip that I had in my fabric. That was not intentional, by the way, in case somebody's popping in and they're like, why do you have a snip there? Yeah, well, just because that's what my fabric decided to have in it. And yes, Kristen, don't you love the big X? You can't miss it. It's the wrong side of the fabric, right? Oops, wrong button. I was trying to go backwards. All right, and cut it. So here we have this. Now let's go back to the table. Actually, before I go to the table, I'm just gonna show you. So here's my super long piece, right? You could press this seam allowance open if you want to. There's really no need to, but you could. I'm gonna turn this right side out. And I can feel that it has a light stretch so I can get it over my head. So now, by the way, you have the option to try it on. And then if it's too long, if I try this on and I'm like, whoa, this is way too long. I don't need it this long. You go ahead and just trim it off. That's fine. The only thing you have to be careful of is you'll have to finish the edge. If you cut this off lower where you sewed, you don't want your stitches to run out or fall out, I should say. Because right now I've backstitched there. Here we go. So here's the bottom. Now, I could finish this if I want to, but like I mentioned, this does not fray. So I just have a cute idea for you. I'll go back to the table and show you that, but I wanted to show you this big part first. And judging by this, it's a little bit too long. I'm gonna shorten it just a smidge, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna finish the ends. And of course, there's a million ways to do this, so I'd love to hear your ways too, but let me just show you this one. All right, you ready? Off to the table. Okay, so here is, I'm gonna line up these seams right here. So 13 inches, it is a little bit longer than 13 inches anyways, but this is pretty long. I'm gonna cut this down to 12 inches. Making sure that the both layers are even. So this is the right sides facing out. I think that this will cut through these all these layers. If not, I'll have to get my scissors. Oh yeah. Okay, now, I could have left an opening there and turned this right side out and sewn this from the inside. I could also turn this from the outside and stitch, but because it doesn't fray, what I'm going to do is line this up with as close as I can to having the layers even. And I'm just going to run a decorative stitch along here. And this will hold these two pieces together, but it's something different. You could also do embroidery, but it's kind of hard that you'd have to just kind of squeeze this on or embroider first, but then you want to have your layers stuck together. So let's go back to the sewing machine. Okay. You could have fun with this and use embroidery thread or you could use different color threads in the top and bottom. This is where I was talking about. See, it's already starting to pull apart because I cut off my back stitches. So be careful of that. And I'm gonna just turn on. I'm gonna stitch from the inside, it's just so much easier. So right now on here, and I think if I pull up a piece of fabric, you'll be able to see this better. For those of you that have this machine, what I'm gonna do is pick a decorative stitch on here. If I just click here, actually, I'm gonna cancel that. I need to go to the decorative stitches first. There we go. It'll just take a second to load. All right, can you see that blue line okay?
I can scroll through here and find a stitch that I want. Actually, I'm changing my mind again. Let's start here. Instead of having to scroll through 500 stitches, can you see that blue line? And if I bring this up, you can just barely see that, but you can see it better on here. So I'm going to just choose a different stitch. This one wouldn't be bad on fleece, but it's kind of tight. I actually kind of like those snowflakes. I'm just going to check if there's anything else that would be cute on there. This one wouldn't be bad because it would stretch. You need something that's going to stretch when you put it over your head. So you wouldn't want to use a straight line or anything like that. Actually, let's go with this one. I'm just going to see if you can see a little bit better. Well, that You can see that pretty good on this fabric. Well, kind of. But that's going to be fine. I'm going to make this a little bit wider and a little bit longer. Okay. And I have pink thread in. It's kind of contrasting, but you'll be able to see it. So I would probably maybe even pick a yellow or some, like, I don't know, winter white on here. So if I start stitching from the inside, and I'm just going to go up about, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe an inch or so. I think I can put on, let's see if I can. I'm going to pull up the grid. I can see that really good on there. And that way I can just line up the edge of the fabric with this grid over here, and then I know it'll be straight. So I'm going to go up just a little bit further, maybe to this line right here. All right, let's give it a try. Now, if I run out of bobbin, I'll just stop and I'll finish it when we're not live. Because you know we're live, and that's when you always run out of the bobbin. And... Don't you dare tell me it was poor planning. <laughs> it's because I've been sewing. A lot of fun things today. So while I'm sewing this, I just have to ask, while you guys were hanging out over the holidays, hopefully you're getting a little rest and relaxation, did any of you just spend a couple of hours just sewing for fun for yourself? Because I have to tell you, I've been trying to make sure in 2021, my goal is to at least have two hours a week that I can just sew for myself. And you're probably laughing because I sew every day, as you know that. But I mean just for myself, like pleasure sewing, where I can make myself a top or work on a new pattern or, you know, something fun just for me. And then, of course, I'll share what I'm working on with tips. But in the meantime, I can just sew with no pressure at all. If it turns out like uh, not so great, it goes into the trash pile. How good is that? Which I don't have any in the trash pile yet. So, all right, can you can see this stitch pretty good right here, can't you? All right. Now, I could even use a pair of pinking shears at the bottom of this. But for those of you that want something a little decorative that looks different than everybody else's mask like this, gator mask, or warm scarf, fleece scarf, you could embroider uh, designs on it on the outside. That would look cool. If you're going to embroider on here, you might want to use like um, a sticky back tearaway stabilizer would probably be good. And you might have to use a topper on as well. So I'm going to turn this off so I just have the grid. There. Hey, we're almost there. Knock on wood, I did not run out of bobbin thread. So if you don't have your machine set the same length as, or height as the, your table, then you could actually just take this and wrap it around the bottom part of your machine down there. That makes it easy too. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. There we go. 
and hopefully you can see that. I actually have my light turned down. Let me turn that up so you can see that as well. All these buttons. There. I don't know if you can see that on here. I'm going to bring it up to the table too, but this will get you started. So if you look closely, isn't that a fun stitch? It actually, it has a little stretch to it so I can get this over my head. Let's go back to the table. Okay. I think this turned out really cute. So the next thing I want to do is I just want to trim just a little bit off. And what I'm going to do is trim one layer a little shorter than the other. So instead of it looking like, oh, you just left your edges raw, it's going to look like it was on purpose, which it is on purpose. So if I just take this super sharp scissors and just glide it. And I'm just eyeballing this, but I'm cutting maybe about, I don't know, quarter of an inch from that stitching. So now it's layered. If you really wanted to have fun, you could have taken a contrasting color of fleece in between these two layers before you did this, and then you'd have the, the pink and maybe an extra color sticking out. Now that would look very cool. You could even use maybe a binding or something like that on there, but just whatever you use, make sure that it stretches the same as the fabric so you can get this thing over your head without popping a bunch of stitches. Or I should say, <laughs> if the fabric doesn't stretch, you'd be popping some fabric. That's all right. If you screw it up, this would make a great bed for the squirrels, right? All right, so there's that one layer. And then the bottom layer, I'm just going to leave, making sure it's nice and straight. The only thing that I'm going to do is trim off some of these seam allowances just so you can't see them as much. I just do a little triangle cut right there. And I could even cut a little bit further up into this section here. And then you won't see that. It's not gonna matter. I mean, this is gonna be the center back of my head anyway, so my hair would be covering that. But there, now I have two layers, just kind of a fun, now you could add embroidery on here, you could add more decorative stitching, whatever you want, but this will be the bottom. I guess it could be the top too, where your neck is, it doesn't matter, it just goes over your head. But that's how simple and fast that is. Now I'm gonna make a ton of these, throw them in the wash, so there's not dust on them, so I'm not sneezing, and I have, I'll be nice and warm for our next hike. All right, so I'm coming back. So what do you think? Super fun, cute color, easy project. This is a great project for kids too, by the way. So those of you that are a total beginner, very easy project. And then the more elaborate you wanna get, you can add the embroidery. But this is really soft on the skin and I it's one of my favorites. I used to have just a ton of these and uh, when we snowmobiled all the time. For some reason, I cannot find them anywhere. So pull out the sewing machine. So one more thing is if your fabric doesn't stretch a lot and you're worried about getting it over your head, the only other thing that you could do is one layer of this and then just fold over the edges and do a decorative stitch or just leave it raw and do decorative stitches at each end. But very easy to do. So I'm all ready for the snow this weekend. What do you think? Do I pre-wash? Yes. Definite easy project for all sewists. Thanks, Lisa. Definitely really cute. Thanks, Susan. Yes, if you missed this show, be sure to share it to your page. I am on YouTube and Facebook. And I will also be dropping this on my blog uh, probably tomorrow, if I get time tonight, but within the next day or so. So you, if you go to my blog, you'll be able to start watching all the videos there, making it easy. It doesn't always show up the same day, but... We're getting there. Bundle up, definitely. All right, Darlene wants to know, 
I thought I saw a question though before that. Does it have to be that long? Oh, heck no. You can make it as long as you want or as short. I have some that are just like this short that I just use. I also, by the way, if you want just the ones that go around your head like a headband, you could do the same thing and just make it shorter. So you just make it, you just have to make sure you get it around your head and then make it as long or short as you want. That was a good question though. Oh, great to see you, Marianne and Lynn. Hi, Carrie. Uh, Michelle, if I try it on in here, I hate to tell you, but I'll be sweating to death. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, do you pre-wash the fleece? That's the question I was looking for. So Caroline, I probably did not pre-wash this fleece, but fleece does not shrink. Now, besides that, I cannot stand dust. Well, dust doesn't like me, I should say. So I will have to wash this before I wear it for two reasons. One, it's been on my shelf for a long time, meaning it has dust. Two, if I'd never washed it before, which I can't remember if I did or not, I would want to wash it if I just picked it up from a store. So for fleece, I don't necessarily pre-wash because of the fact it doesn't shrink. I usually pre-wash everything else though. Knits like what I'm wearing, I pre-washed this before I sewed it together. And also even ITY knits that are polyester, I pre-wash those because quite often I want to make sure that the print isn't going to wash out or there isn't going to be any problems with the fabric. Easy peasy. I agree, Ivy. <laughs> All right, I saw a couple of others. <laughs> so Michelle, when I do wear it though this week, when it's, I think it's gonna snow on Friday and I will take a photo. I'm gonna try to go walk down by the beach. So if it's not too freezing. Um, it's not like making an infinity scarf. An infinity scarf is where you twist the ends. So that's a little bit different. This is just straight on each side. Infinity scarves are really fun to make. In fact, for those of you that are in my craftsy class, I have uh, infinity scarves in there. And uh, there's a few other places too. I can try to find those if you haven't seen those tutorials. All right, let's see, I see a few more. Somebody asked how to, yes, headband would be a great idea. Ooh, Trisha, that'd be a good idea. Ponytail hole in the back. That would be a good idea, very good idea. <laughs> oh, thanks, Marianne. She's looking at the Virtual Sewing and Quilting Expo. Yeah, there's a lot of those coming out too. By the way, I believe, and yes, we have a ton in the Fashion Sewing Club. How many videos do we have in the Fashion Sewing Club now? A lot. So thank you, by the way, for all of that joined the Fashion Sewing Club. We do have a lot of fun in there. I was going to tell you, I did forget to mention that the classes at are open now for the Sew Expo in Puyallup. It's all virtual. I have two classes each day. There's a couple on the free stage, which is going to be jeans, which is going to be kind of a hint for the class that's coming out. It's the pre to the class. <laughs> you all are waiting for that. But I told you, it'll probably be like uh, the end of February, 1st of March when that's up. I'm just waiting to get the denim. So everything's here and I'm not pre-ordering and waiting three months for something which would make my life crazy. Uh, what exactly is ITY? Yeah, so hey, Joanne. Um, ITY knit is a, like a polyester, basically. It, it's the make, it's, you've seen that word thrown out there a lot. I like ITY knit just because it drapes so beautifully. Usually it has a beautiful print. Uh, the only negative is polyester. So if you're in a really warm climate, it doesn't always work out so well. But if you do the Delilah and have little slits in the sleeves, it's great. So I will be showing fabric on, in Saturday's class. And also you're in Fashion Sewing Club. So tomorrow uh, we have our Fashion Sewing Club at four and I have some fabrics there too that I can show you to help. Marty, do you find these stretch out after wearing? Yes, they do. So you just throw them back in the wash and they go right back into place. They do stretch out. In fact, that's the part I like because when I'm putting it on for snowmobiling, I'll put this on and I'll stretch this way out so it's not touching my mouth, but it's it's literally this far from my face because I can't stand that in my mouth. But I can stretch it out and it'll stay right there for snowmobiling, put my helmet over it, 
and it blocks the wind through that little, you know, the little bit that can get through your helmet or if you're walking or whatever, fishing. And then I throw them in the wash and they go right back into place. So they do stretch out. Now, Marty, one thing though, is if you have two layers, it stretches out a lot slower than if you have one layer. One layer really stretches a lot quickly. Okay, I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. Can you make a hidden pocket? Oh, that's a good idea. Sure. Just you'd probably want it kind of, well, if you're going to throw your credit cards or something in there, you could make a little pocket in there. Thanks, Patty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I could not think of the word. <laughs> that's why I love the wolf pack, because you could all tell when I'm like, it's that, it's that. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Patty. Oh, hey, Joanne, nice to see you. All right, guys, you have any more questions? Because that was your fun tutorial for the day. So don't forget, and I'll run through this one more quick time. If you want to watch this tutorial, just save it to your page. You can come back to my blog tomorrow and watch it. I don't think I'll get it up by tonight, but it'll be up tomorrow. And if you want to join us on the virtual NITS class or you'd like a chance to win the NITS class, this is where you go. Go to AngelaWolf.com. And click on blog or go to fashion sewing with angelawolf.com. I think I have the website. Hold on, I think it's right. I have it somewhere. It's pretty easy to remember though. Angelawolf.com. There you go. Or you can go to my blog, which is right down there. But that's very easy. Just go there and then. You'll see this little photo. There'll be other photos too. So when you go to the blog, you might have to scroll down a couple to get to this because there'll be a new blog over this tomorrow. Scroll down. It tells you all about the class. There should be a section right here. Yours might look a little different. I'm already logged in. So you can already see people are already in there commenting. It's like our little club. It's so fun. And so this is not just for Fashion Sewing Club members. So this is for um, anyone who wants to join us for three hours on Saturday. Grab your coffee, tea, whatever. And all you have to do is scroll down here a little ways and leave a comment. I'll just refresh this so you can see. Oh, my goodness. You guys are obviously multitasking <laughs> because you're right. There were no comments when I started this. And you, 16 of you were multitasking. So good for you. And then tomorrow, I will post something on Facebook and Instagram to give you additional chances to win. So this will, I will randomly draw someone that will join us in class. And if you're already in class, don't worry, you just get a refund. It'll be kind of like a special surprise that day. All right, you guys have any more questions for me? Oh, it's great to see you all. Amy, great to see you. I hope you had fun. It's an easy project. I look forward to seeing yours. And I'm, I think I'm gonna have to do some with a little embroidery. Proud member of the Wolf Pack, maybe? I don't know, I'm seeing some fun things with this. So I've got a little bit more fabric. I think I have green and blue. So I'm going to be all sporty for the weekend when the snow arrives. All right. Have a wonderful day. And let's see, Marion, let me see what you just said. Is this more of a lecture style or hands-on? It's both, actually. It's like taking... It's, I would say it's more hands-on because, you know me, I can't stand to sit... Well, I can talk for a while, but it's going to be... Showing you samples, you'll see things at the sewing machine or serger and the cutting table. Similar to this, like you see here, but three hours of it. So, Marion, you're in the Fashion Sewing Club, so the layout is very similar to that. And then there will be a break for questions. Nope, you do not have to be in the Fashion Sewing Club to go. This is for anybody could sign up for this class. But if you're in the Fashion Sewing Club, you get a discount. So just go into the Fashion Sewing Club to get the code. That's where that came in. So you do not have to be a member. Oh, you're welcome. You guys have a wonderful day too. And tomorrow we will be live on the Brother page and some brand ambassadors are gonna be on there doing some more with organizing. And if you missed last Thursday's show, it was hilarious, but there were a lot of great tips on there for organizing, which is great. Oh, you're welcome, Marian. Anybody else have questions before I hop off? Oh, you're welcome, Jen. 
This will be great for outside. And Fashion Swing Club, I will see you tomorrow afternoon. All right, everyone. That's perfect, Glenda. See you later. Have a wonderful day and talk to you soon.